This is Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. If you drive long haul, short haul, or heavy haul, they're here to empower and inspire women in the trades on TNCRadio.live. So gear down, sit back, and enjoy. Welcome to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy DeCaro. We're a show that works to inspire and empower women in trucking, in the trades, and every profession. We tackle all kinds of topics and we work to encourage women to be their very best with informative guests and women who've been champions. I'm Shelley. And I'm Kathy. No topic is taboo on our rig. We tackle the tough topics along with the not so tough topics. And we like to feature experts, champions, and celebrities who can assist women in being the very best they can be. We also like to showcase amazing women and road warriors who've made huge strides in their industry by being champions and mentors for others. Angelique Temple is one of these people. She's the owner of Tornado Transport in Virginia. She's been in the trucking industry for over 18 years. Her story is amazing, and we're glad to have her on the show. Welcome, Angelique. It's an honor. It's an honor. You I know, think the honor is ours. Come on. Yes. Come on. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. I understand. <laughs> Angelique, I understand Kathy first met you, what, at the Women in Trucking Accelerate Conference in Dallas. She did after I unbothered her and forced her to take a picture with me. And then I kind of was like, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like a forced sisterhood on my part. Oh, so that's like, so cool. Oh, that I had on the, this this really snazzy one of my favorite hats with these big goggles yes. that it's got spikes sticking out of and it's all shiny and blingy you know kind of like my personality <laughs> and she her and her husband comes up <laughs> yes scary. I literally bombarded her <laughs> <laughs> that's great yeah it turned we've out we've been bonded we, since that's it yeah. we have so much in common both that's of us wonderful. have the nicknames tornado uh both of us went through the life struggle both of us is like you know we have the respect for ourselves but it seems like we're still fighting a little bit so we have so much in common and both of us have personalities that can't be in the box so yeah that's i don't right. know I love it. A great thing for apart. the world i love yeah. oh, the birthdays are a day apart that's wow. right. Yeah, because I'm born May 31st. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I'm a this baby. Yeah. And we even did a, our interview uh, for, oh, God, what was that show that? Um, it was BCB Live. BCB Live. We, yeah, did, we that did that together. together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Oh, and it's really funny. I was laughing because she was ta- talking about her, her um, business being called Tornado Transport. I'm like, what? Everywhere I go, I'm called Tucker or Tornado because <laughs> I- I'm beyond a hurricane. Right. I- That's great. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. So I have, I have Tornado Transport. Um. Mm-hmm for this particular truck the truck that i won which we'll talk about in a minute that Mm -hmm. name is tornado enterprises and i also started my business that's going to be the nonprofit called tornadoes touch so those are three different tornado names that i'm that i have now oh i love it (laughs) are gonna keep those names rolling there you go I yeah, love and... that tornado's touch. Oh man, that's we great. gotta talk more about that. Hold oh, absolutely, out. want to cover all of that. Yeah, Angelique, I understand your handles, Lady Tornado. That's it. Sounds like you're quite the powerhouse. Would you consider yourself a whirlwind in what everything you're doing? Absolutely, because um, back in '99 when I started trucking, um, I had a dispatcher. So his name was Pete Futrell, and he was like my dad figure because my father was still in New York because that's where I'm from so he had me out there and I ran my first day on my own gasoline and I came back and he was like well what's wrong and I said nothing I'm done and he was like there's no way you're done so it it sort of reminds me of Kathy's you know toothless Joe story because he definitely said now with someone that runs like you I'm gonna name you tornado so I've kept it all that time he's oh, now passed away great. so yeah i've kept it i've kept it that i kept it all that time so this is my name this is my personality yeah all you got to do is meet this this tor- this little tornado and you'll know you'll understand <laughs> that's great you meet him once. yes yes that's i've raised great. six kids and yeah I do my own charities, so yeah, I've just, 
everything is like, go, I'm going here. Okay, now I need to do this. Now I need to do that. And I need to work in between. Now I need to do that. <laughs> so yes, yeah, a nonstop <laughs> mission. It's a so, nonstop mission. Angelique, you've got quite the story. How about you let our listeners know a, a little bit about yourself? Okay, so my name is Angelique Temple. I am a 23-year driving veteran in this trucking industry. Um, I started off hauling hazmat, and now I finally run my own business after my last two of six children graduated high school. And um, that's about it. I mean, I'm a, I'm a mentor. I do my own charities. Um, I try to help any and everybody. It is my dream to have multiple transportation companies, not just to be an owner operator. Um, we, my son and I, who lives in um, California, he's my oldest son, we are joining together to work on building one of the largest community centers in the world. And we want that to be worldwide. In the meantime, I'm still doing everything on my part on this end because charity is where my heart begins, ends. It is my life story and it's what I will continue to do. That's so wonderful. You're paying it forward. So what kind of charities are you involved with? And I believe you said you're setting up a nonprofit. I am, and and I am the charity. Okay. So I'm not involved with it. Yeah, I literally do feeding the homeless, and my kids will come with me. I, I do that myself. Um, I do sponsor families. Um, so the school system has their social worker, and they have a list of families that are in the school system that are homeless. Of course, they can't let the other kids know for fear of them getting teased, but I work side by side with two different social workers in the Richmond School District, and um, what they do is they just call me, and they say, this is the situation, and this is what the family needs. So when I'm shopping, I'm shopping for me. I'm shopping for them. If they say they need beds, if they say they're in a hotel for now, and they need to extend the stay, this is what I do. If the kids need clothes, if the mother needs personal supplies, this is what I do, and I also do that for my oldest daughter, Artisha, um, some of her patients. Um, she works in DC, so she works for National Children's Hospital, and I donate the blankets and the hats because you know doing chemo with the cancer children sometimes it gets cold. So I also do that um, as her mother, and because that's where my heart is at, and we're going to do that on a wider scale. Um, now that I've picked up the truck and I'm getting the name with or without the name, it was being done. So needless to say, with or without the name, as long as it takes for them to turn it into the nonprofit that is going to be, it's still being done. Nothing stops because of the name, because I didn't have a name all these years I was doing it. This is wonderful. Now, you're talking about the truck that you won at Mid-America Trucking? Yes, uh, I picked it up. I just yeah. got back this morning. <laughs> yes, I just got back 5 a.m. That's so cool. <laughs> oh, my God. What did you win, so, Angelique? I mean, that is how many people win a big rig. This is just I've never won cool. anything in my life. So for this to be the first, I'm grateful. <laughs> The situation is that Arrow Truck Sales teams up with women in trucking um, and they donate a truck. So this is not the first truck giveaway. And um, it's not just like, oh, it's a random pick a number. No, they actually ask a question. You have to answer it in the essay form. And so the person or people that go on to be semi-finalists are based on the originality for the essay and based on what, what the essay is saying, like, does it reach out and touch who's reading it? You know, so that's what it was. And so when I got to the semifinals and then um, I did the interview and it was face-to-face -face Zoom and then I made it to the finals. I was like, no way. Even they were standing there because you have to be present in order to win. So they were standing there talking about, you know, the winner of this truck has been driving since 99. And I still was like, wait, they're talking about me. Wait a minute. <laughs> 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 like oh my I'm god still, I'm it's shocked. Great. like wait that's me is that me they're talking about me absolutely so so it was crazy so then i went to pick it up and because this particular truck this year has a picture of like a woman with a cape so I've decided to mimic that and make like my own and I'm going to say costume but it's really not so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do like a red t-shirt I'll get someone to make me up some red t-shirts um with tornadoes touch name on it because it is a legal business name already so mm -hmm. I'm going to get someone to make some red t-shirts up and put like some black jeans and just kind of mimic the picture on the truck so that when I do the charities it will be sort of like a whole Wonder Woman type 
woman driving the truck and actually mimicking. I think that the kids are going to love it because I'm doing a back to school drive this year. So that will be my first big, you know, thing that I'm going to do this year. I'm going to do the back to school drive for the school supplies. Mm -hmm. So I think that that is going to go off like a hitch. And then when I do the cancer hospital, I think it will go off as well, even though they can't see the truck because a lot of them can't come outside. But I think that just being in the costume and bringing whatever that is requested, whether it be coloring books or whatever, we're getting the list together, what they want now. I think that that's going to be phenomenal. Oh, it's terrific. Stay tuned for more of Women Road Warriors coming up. Industry Movement Trucking Moves America Forward is telling the story of the industry. Our safety champions, the women of trucking, independent contractors, the next generation of truckers, and more. Help us promote the best of our industry. Share your story and what you love about trucking. Share images of a moment you're proud of. And join us on social media. Learn more at TruckingMovesAmerica.com. Welcome back to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. We're talking with owner-operator Angelique Temple, a.k.a. Lady Tornado. She runs Tornado Transport, and she's in the process of forming a nonprofit called Tornado's Touch to feed the homeless, help families in need, and other people. Angelique just won a big rig at the Mid-America Trucking Show this year, so she's definitely on a roll to pay it forward with her nonprofit. It's really exciting. Angelique how were you chosen? What was it that got the judges to say, okay, Angelique's perfect for this and she's going to win this big truck. And what kind of rig did you get? Okay. So the answer to the first question was, cause I asked that question, you know, I had to ask that. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I asked that question. I, I wanted to know, just like you wanted to know, I wanted to know what was it? What was that decided factor? So actually, because, um, they said that I was the well, I had a pretty original essay because it's just the way I feel. And I've been in women in trucking since 2015. So I've been mentoring through women, women in trucking and doing my own mentoring as well. So and everybody thought, well, that must have been a factor. No, it actually wasn't. It's because my vision and everything that I'm already doing and what the truck adds to a more wider mm-hmm. variety of my vision. So actually, they said that will put them over the top was that I was one of the only finalists who actually had a plan laid out, put together, you know, and with or without winning the truck, it's going to happen. It's just, you know, yeah, so they, that, that's what they said. And I was so grateful for that. I was, I was still in shock. Oh, <laughs> I think it hit me when so I pulled cool. up. When I pulled up to, to the Arrow Truck Sales in Cincinnati, I think that's when it hit me because my husband flew in with me to drive back. It's like almost nine hours back to Virginia from there. Mm-hmm. So I think when we pulled up, because um, they had a car service pick us up, that, that was really great. So we got a, we had a whole big history lesson. And Mr. Humphrey was the guy's name. He was so smart and so educated. And he was like, well, if you look over there, you can see that. I was like, man. I was like, I didn't even have to, I didn't even have to set an appointment for this tour. You know, it was so awesome. And then when I pulled oh. up, I was like, oh my God, there it is. It's like, finally it hit me. Like, finally it hit me me when I pulled up and I was like wait yeah so this is real this is not this yeah. is not a joke this is real so uh, what, what kind of big rig is it it is a Volvo 2018 mm-hmm. and so um I just I'm just in oh. awe let me say it's that it's beautiful because, I saw it yeah. I was at the yes NASA and show and I, I took a picture like you know kind of a selfie like a ha ha look at this and it right, is a beautiful right. beautiful truck Oh my God. Right. And it's also published already. So anybody who looks up um, Women in Trucking Truck Giveaway 2023, they will see not only the pictures, but the videos that were taken and everything. And it's phenomenal. I mean, it's phenomenal. And I, I just, when I pulled up, that's that's when it finally hit me. Like, oh, like, wow. Oh my God. So, like, yeah. So I actually <laughs> won it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that is so cool. And what are you going to use the, the, the big rig for? 
Well, I have another company name I started for that one because I'm currently leased on with this particular truck. Even though I do my own work, it's not like a company lease on just a digital. So um, I have my lady getting my numbers together for my own authority and that truck will run under Tornado Enterprises LLC. Yeah. So that's already a legal name. And um, so that will be used to run the road, of course, but I don't run far, um, so not anymore. But it also will be used for different events. So that will be like my, mm -hmm. I'm running and then we're going to do this event and I'm running and then I'm going to do this. So eventually I want to get to the point to where I'm doing at least a minimum two different cities on each weekend for the, the whole entire year with what I'm doing with the charities, with the wow. truck. That That is oh what I'm God. doing because... My I mission statement was, you. yes, you know, you're welcome anytime, Kathy. I already told you. So, <laughs> so I think cause, great. because my mission statement is a blessed to be a mother of six, but called to bring motherhood to six million. So my goal is six million kids. And I know that I'm not going to stop until mm. I reach that goal. This is yes, so, absolutely. so awesome what you're doing, Angelique. What exactly is the need out there? Maybe you could educate our listeners with, with the children. <laughs> Well, a lot of the things that I see, because I guess every state has their own different needs, but worldwide, you're dealing with the parents not being able to, one, get enough food and two, get enough supplies. Like it might be school supplies. It might be just something simple like jackets. It might be something simple like maybe just shoes or maybe extra socks or, you know, something that you could actually order and just say, not think twice about it. Something that you would be buying anyways. Um, for me, having all my children grown, that's it. It's just, you know, like a, a need for everything, especially with the economy the way it is. Oh, yeah. You know, the economy brings a need for everything. So mostly I do um, cleaning supplies and I will do school supplies. I will also do food. I will also do clothes. Mm -hmm. So there's a widespread of what the need is depending on the family situation, you know? So um, yeah. it's like everything is needed, but that's the reason why I do it myself because I know that there are great charities out there, but I'm more comfortable knowing that this is what was needed and this is what was given. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh my God, you know, we're so alike. That's exactly what I do. Everywhere yes. I go, like I, I'm bringing, like in other countries, I'm bringing suitcases of school supplies, delivering them right. right. to make yeah. sure that the schools that need it the most are getting it. Right. I get a, this donation from all these, um, uh, this this place called the Mustard Seed up in Canada, where they, they, they collect uh, all the hotel, you know, the soap, the soaps and shampoos and toiletries. I bring a whole suitcase of those and I bring those to the women's shelters. I brought, oh, twice I brought them to some prisons down in Barbados because they don't have access to it, right? So where wherever the need is, I see it, I'll do it. I'll bring it. Wow, that's amazing. It yeah, because I think yeah. it's just, and it's, it's not that we're saying, I hope that people will never misunderstand what Kathy and I both are saying. We're not saying that they're not getting no. the supplies where it's needed. What we're basically saying is, well, basically what we're saying is whoever's getting it might not be all that needed. Because okay. as, a, as a mother of six, even though I worked, it was a lot of resources that I couldn't find to give to people or I couldn't find for myself at times. A mm -hmm. lot of it was because I was a working mother. And a lot mm -hmm. of it was because I was a truck driver. So even little simple things, I was looking for the resources. I did not have it. And it was fine because that's what put it in my mindset. This is what's needed. So mm -hmm. I started to do that. So this is, this is where we are. This mm -hmm. is where we are. And this is what we're going to continue to do. Angelique, you're amazing. How do you do all of this and drive too? Because how many hours are you driving? I mean, what kind of driving do you do? Well, I pull drive in. So I'm now to the point where I am not even going far. I'm within 150 to 200 mile radius. Okay. And that's what I've been doing. So basically I'm just running. I run with two brokers. So they have me dedicated mm -hmm. on different um beverage runs because <laughs> I don't know that I'm allowed to say who I run for but obviously they just work with me so well and basically I'm just running back and forth so I run for myself now so okay yeah. I I'm doing it in between regardless but even as a company driver I was doing it I was driving bus for the children's ministry for the rock church so I'm getting out I'm rushing to Richmond I'm I changing my clothes I gotta go pick up 40 kids I gotta bring up my kids are with me I'm like come on come on let's go we'll get something on the way so yeah we have to make time there is no time you have to make the time 
People ask me the same thing all the time. How the hell do you get everything done? You know, on top of what, because when I'm at work, I forget it. Like I have barely any time because I don't have my phone. I don't have anything, right? I said, man, it's just a Gemini thing. I got eight hamsters in one wheel and I see what needs to be done and poof, I'm on it. Right, yeah. right. People get exhausted. Like my family, oh my God, they always say, okay, uh, they got to take turns. Like my sister will come for a bit. Okay, I'm exhausted. <laughs> it's honestly, I believe it's a Gemini thing. It is, Passion it is. And the vision that we have, it's like, and I, I, well, her and I are exactly alike. We don't wait for people. The, the number one thing I no, hate to do. No, no. <laughs> you know what? With the waiting for an hour for one person, I could have had it done five times <laughs> over. <laughs> yes, yes. Yep, yep. And, and it's not just us saying, because I don't want people to say, oh, my God, somebody might have an experience with Gemini's and say, oh, they, they're just talking like that because they didn't know. We have proof. No. I have two ex-husbands because I refuse to wait for people. I refuse <laughs> for anybody <laughs> to call me back. So I oh married Kathy. <laughs> Kathy met my husband, and, you know, she knows him and I are like two peas in a pod. And oh. it's, like, totally different. So every time I say something, I'm like, this is what I'm doing. A, B, C, and D. He's like, okay, so just tell me what you need me to do. You know, oh, that's so he, great. He, already, he already knows that that's my spirit. And it's like, yeah, yeah. we don't just say no. that because we're trying to be big, <laughs> bad Geminis. It's just we don't have the capability no. to wait for people because if we wait to, to get things done, then that would mean that we weren't Geminis at all. <laughs> there you oh, go. That's you. not what we do. I love you so much. So your husband knew that it was a uh, hang on, go for the ride or forget it. <laughs> yes, he knows how I am. He complains now. Like people always say, "Oh my God, it's so great that you guys work together." He he was like, "Oh, you mean like she when she used to work me to death?" I mean because <laughs> and then you come up with another one, then you come up with another one, then you come up with another, you know. So hence the name tornado. So yeah, it's like yeah. you know, get it done, and I run my life the same way, and my kids are are all all the same way I, I trained them to look out for each other mm -hmm. I didn't care what they wanted to do in their life but I told them no matter what comes and goes y'all are growing up look out for each other and I always told them if one person misses the bus y'all all miss the bus no mm -hmm. one comes yeah. home without one sibling so yeah. you know only one time that happened and it was nothing that could be done uh my daughter now who's um, gonna be 22 Asha um, you know, the twins are underneath hers. They're the, they're the babies, Soraya and Elijah. And she came, she came home and she said, Mom, I don't know what happened. They told her that Soraya was on the bus, but they had to split up the buses. But the other bus driver took her somewhere else, like to a, the wrong location because they were short on um, bus drivers. So that wasn't her fault, but she was so upset because she knew she thought I would be upset, but I wasn't. I was more concerned. So I called and they said, no, it was our fault. The bus driver actually told her to get on this particular bus that she was dropping off at the same location to kind of split up the kids, but um, it didn't happen. So they actually did wind up meeting me and bringing her um to me. So it was fine. And I'm oh, I'm hey. that mom. My hmm. kids play sports. I'm the mom that brings everybody's kids home late at night, okay. you know. Uh -huh. And um, I, I just, I met a woman um, one time and I said, how you doing? And she said, I'm fine. And she said, do I know you? And I said, you should, but I introduced myself and she was like, why should I know you? I said, cause I drop your daughter off every single night when they get finished with those basketball games and my daughter played basketball. My daughter, Kayla played basketball. My son, um, Gabriel, he played football. I'm the one that drops people's kids off when they can't come get them and when they didn't have rides to come get them I was the one with my minivan and I'm like get in let's go and I make sure they get in the door make sure they you know I see the light turn on and make sure they're good even if it meant that I didn't get home too late it didn't matter I can't get up and look on the news and see something happened to someone's child that happened to me with one of my friends as a mm -hmm. younger child growing up in New York. And it's something that's been my biggest fear to look on there and see and know that I could have done something. Mm -hmm. You are amazing, Angelique. I'm just oh, sitting whoa, here going, whoa. she's wow. She's so amazing <laughs> that she, Thank when, you. I, when I met her at the uh, women in trucking in, uh, in November in Dallas, she was uh, voted into the, the hall of fame what, what was the name of that yeah what it was the house it was the house <laughs> hall of fame yeah so that the, the people of house diesel treatment actually created 
um, a hall of fame uh, to recognize extraordinary people. And they picked me um, for the most recent hall of fame inductee. And I was so honored um, that they just allowed me to tell my whole entire story. And I'm on their website and, you know, I just, I always promote their products too. And it's just, it's just been great. I mean, they just are amazing people. And, and for the house to recognize me, I was like, wait, when they, when they, I got that phone call, I was like, I was like, a house, which house? And then I was like, oh, wait, did these are female people? Are you kidding me right now? So I'm like, I was like, man, that is crazy. And then I also just finished doing a, um, photo shoot so I, I did a photo shoot because I was picked to be one of the next uh, faces for progressive insurance um, they found me through my Instagram looked at my mentoring videos and um, so that's that's exciting that's coming up um, so I'm exciting to wait to see that progress <laughs> no pun intended what is your Instagram insurance. yeah what is your Instagram account where do people find you it can pull up Lady Tornado it can pull up Angie Temple <laughs> okay. and I also do TikTok the same thing Angie Temple. If they want to look me up on Facebook, it would be one word, a tornado and the last name Stone, because that's my mom and dad's name. And for my people back home in New York, I have gotten a lot of phone calls. I was like, we've been trying to reach you forever, but nobody knew my new name. So I just had to put that a tornado stone into Facebook so that all of my old school buddies and all of my childhood friends could find me because, mm -hmm. you know, they just, it's been years, it's been years and they hadn't seen me. And it, it just was great to reconnect with so mm -hmm. many childhood friends that are doing so much productive things in, in the neighborhoods. And even if they moved out of the neighborhood, they're still just pushing. They're still pushing. That's great stuff. We want to learn more, but we do have to go to break. Stay tuned for more of Women Road Warriors coming up. Trucking Moves America Forward, or TMAF, is building a positive image of trucking by telling the story of the hardworking drivers and industry professionals who support the industry. And you can be a part of it. Learn more about TMAF and how you can join and be a part of the industry movement working to build a strong image of trucking by visiting TMAF's website at truckingmovesamerica.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our latest channel, TikTok. Welcome back to Women Road Warriors with Shelley Johnson and Kathy Takaro. We're talking with owner operator Angelique Temple, aka Lady Tornado. She runs Tornado Transport, and she's in the process of forming a nonprofit called Tornado's Touch to feed the homeless, help families in need, and other people. She's a mentor and member of Women in Trucking. And she's seriously paying it forward for so many people. I love the fact you have not forgotten your roots. You want to give back. You have made quite the journey. And on your social media, what kind of messaging are you doing? Is it mentoring for people? Um, I am. I'm doing all kinds of videos. So what I do now since the uh, the videos are being able to be uploaded through TikTok and I can share it through the other social medias. That's what I've been doing because what I do is I give tips to new drivers, old drivers, mm -hmm. kind of give tips on how to run your business out here. And, and most importantly, I give tips on mental stress. It is a big, big deal with me. I am very big on mental health. So I mm -hmm. give all kinds of tips on not only how to deal with stress out here because everybody can say don't stress, but unless they give you the tools, to give you different ways not to stress or let you know how how mm -hmm. irrelevant it is yeah. to stress. They, they're going to stress regardless because it's easier for somebody to say, oh, don't stress over that because you couldn't have told me that when I was <laughs> raising six kids. Like, oh, wow. I need a solution. I don't, need, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't need a bumper sticker. I need a solution. You know? Well, that, that was something I <laughs> so, wanted yeah. to, to touch on. How on earth uh, could you uh, drive and, and raise six kids? I mean, didn't you need to clone yourself? I mean, I'm just amazed that you accomplished all of this. Yeah, my well, a lot of my family, especially my son, he says, well, when they made you mom, they broke the mold. My mom has said that to me before <laughs> because it is just, it's something that has to be done because I was, I was a single mom for most of the time. So you can imagine having a life, being married, and being abandoned, and now you have six kids, right? So 
I mean, it's something, it's in my nature. Mm -hmm. So I tell people all the time, the type of dad, that my, my dad, I, I make him laugh even to this day because I was so different than the other kids. The way my dad raised me in New York, I said, meanwhile, while everybody was playing with their dolls at 10 and 11, I was learning how to change tires because this is what, <laughs> this is what my dad, you know, I was the only girl. So I was like, listen, this is what you need to know. Let me show you how to change these socks. Let me show you how to, you know, change these tires. Let me show you how to take apart these pipes. So, you know, because if I'm not here, your mother might get something stuck. And then I, I need to show you how to do this. So I then began to teach my kids at those young ages too, because he wanted me to be as equipped as my brothers, but also to know that I was a woman. And that's what, that was his exact saying. I want to raise you like I raised the boys, but never forget that you're a woman. So I'm always just digging into, and he had this saying when I would ask him something, he would say, well, what would MacGyver do? Cause that's what we used to watch all the time. Oh yeah. So yeah. That's yeah. what I do. So that's what I do. I'll figure it out. You have to figure it out. My dad's not going to give you the answer. I mean, you know, he's probably going to listen to this later and be like, yep, yep, yep. Because <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Anybody who knows uh, Mr. George Stone from Far Rockaway, Queens knows he will make you figure it out. It's just like, Dad, I need to do this. And he's like, uh-huh. So what, what did you think would work? How many plans do you have? And I said, um, well, I don't, I'm asking you. I don't know. And he's like, oh, well, what would MacGyver do? You know, so I had to uh -huh. think about it. Yeah. And yeah, you have to think about it and say, well, what would, would MacGyver do? So this is how, you know, this is how we go along our life and just try to figure things out because it's something that's in you. When people come up to me and ask me, how in the world do you raise six children? I asked them how many kids they have. And most of the time they said, I have one. How do you do with six? I said, how do you not do it with six? I wouldn't know what to do with one because my life yeah. with six children <laughs> And the way I was self-dispatched as a as a hazmat driver, my day has to be where I have to figure it out. So if I had six loads, because I, I was one of the top drivers there, so and that's just the name that they gave me. So and I was also the only self-dispatch driver. So that's what I was doing, talking to the shippers, talking to the customers, like, this is where I'm gonna bring this, I'm gonna bring this, I'm gonna bring this early because I have to go to Carolina. And they're like, that's fine, Angie, because that was my reputation. They knew that I was gonna get it done. So I run everything the same way. My life is like that. If I had a day that I had one or two loads, I felt like I was losing my mind. Like, so I have nothing to figure out, just these two loads and this is what I'm doing. I mean, I literally felt like I was going crazy. Oh yes. So did you start driving after you were kind of left by yourself and on your own with six oh, No, children? I was I was married still to my first husband when I started driving. And I, okay. I drove a bus before that prior. So okay. I guess I need to mention that because I think that when I won the truck, everybody said, you know, I've had my CDO. No, I've had my CDO before that because I drove a bus in New York City. And what happened was years and years ago, I got hit. Um, accidentally, it was just a turning lane situation. I was in my right lane and it was a tractor trailer that sideswiped me Ooh. and it kind of put me out of commission for a while. So, you know, the, the company, of course, I won't mention their name because I want to put a bad name, but um, the company that actually hit me actually paid for the doctor's bills and paid, you know, and said, we're going to just give you compensation. And the lawyer was like, well, we can do more, but, um, we have to sign this paper saying you're not going to drive again. I said, that's not going to happen. Let them cut the check for the bills. Nobody dictates what I'm going to do with my future. I'm not going to do for that. You. So yeah. <laughs> that was like a whole big thing. <laughs> God, I love you. Yeah. Wow. I love your spirit. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, eat my dust. Watch me. I'm doing this. Yes. You know? yeah. Yes. I love them when people say you can. I'm like, because my, my favorite thing is I'm, I can show you, then I can tell you. There you go. There that, you go. That's like when I was on the dozer and they put me on a three day trial thing and everybody thought I was going to fail. I'm like, oh, yeah, watch this. Not only did I did I pass it, I succeed. I went above and beyond to the yep. point where the trainer came and shook my hand and says, I've never seen this in all my 20 years. Oh, my that's God. Right. That's right. That's huge. Thing? Yeah, man, watch this. Uh -huh. They look at yeah. us and they probably say, what are they on? What kind of high is that? It's like, it's called life. It's called life. Yeah. They never needed to authorize any illegal drugs in the United States because you can be just as high off life if you are doing yep. something progressive, if you are helping people, if you are 
pushing towards goals and making those goals become reality. That's all you need. Yeah. If you're living your passion, you know? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but a lot of that has to do with other people because a lot of people have different dreams and goals. But if, if you have a career, but your career is different than what your calling is, if your calling is to help people and you're actively not doing that, you're never going to be as happy as like right. Kathy mm -hmm. and I, you're yep. never going to be as fulfilled. You're yep. always going to be looking for that empty space filler through any kind of relationship or any kind of itemized object. And it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen because you yep. know you're supposed to be doing more. You know that you went through the yep. kind of life you went through because you're supposed to give to others. You're supposed to help others. You're supposed to make sure that someone else can not only not go through that, but if they do go through it, they know that it's not the end. And also that you help them through it and let them know this is what happens at the end of that rough road. So don't turn around. Don't take those detours because th this is where it is. So yep. it's, it's no giving up on this end. So Angelique, what kind of messages would you have for women who want to go into trucking uh, or even in any profession? How, how are they true to themselves? I think that that's a, a big thing. You're very self-sufficient. You're very enterprising, but you're true to yourself. Right. I think that is the respect thing. <clears throat> I think that they have to set the standard mentally. And even though no matter what profession you're in, you're always going to feel like you're always proving yourself. You're always going to feel like, you know, I'm, I'm in this thing and I have to prove myself. I have to make sure that they know that I can do this because like me in a mostly male predominated when I first started field, it, it's just something that a lot of women feel. And I just say, just do it. My personality speaks for me before you even know who I am. When I first started driving for the company Atlantic Boat Carrier, I never forget the day because the gentleman that was in charge then asked the, uh, the, shop, the shop maintenance manager when I was going up the hill. So how many gears did she miss? He said, not one. And you need to get her to train some of these other drivers because obviously, <laughs> so I felt so good when he told That's me that. Great. <laughs> because I mean, it's just, a be, they just have to be secure in themselves to know that they can do it. And it's not enough just to do it. Do your job, but do what you do and be the best at it. You have to, if you feel like that you are good at it, get better. And if you feel like you've, got, you've gotten better, then you have to become an expert. And nobody really becomes an expert at something like trucking, even though people will say with the years I have, oh, you must be an expert. No, because it's always different things that I'm learning every day. But you have to show that you can do it above and beyond. It's mm -hmm. not just driving. What are you doing outside mm -hmm. of driving? Anybody can deliver a load. Are you talking to people on the way? Do people know you when you walk in the door? I could have the worst day possible nobody knows it but me and the man upstairs because when I walk in I'm the same as Angie I'm the same lady tornado I don't change and they look for that they look for that mm -hmm. we are the sunshine yeah. <laughs> and you set the pace actually I think when you come in with sunshine other people will react oh with the yeah sunshine. yes yeah yes yeah. they do they do because they don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. They don't have a choice. There's no way you could be around me and act like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know, and that's right? great. Stay tuned for more of Women Road Warriors coming up. Kathy DeCaro is nothing short of amazing. She not only drives the world's biggest truck as a heavy equipment operator in Northern Alberta, Canada. She's an international motivational speaker and the author of Dream Big, an autobiography about overcoming a lifetime of trauma and abuse that led to dreams of success. Kathy inspires people the world over to change their lives and improve their self-worth. Her book will change your life. She's passionate about personal growth and believes anyone can change their circumstances and overcome their obstacles if they believe in themselves. Her life will amaze you and seriously inspire you. Be sure to order a copy of her book, Dream Big, on Amazon.com. Industry movement Trucking Moves America Forward is telling the story of the industry. Our safety champions? 
the women of trucking, independent contractors, the next generation of truckers, and more. Help us promote the best of our industry. Share your story and what you love about trucking. Share images of a moment you're proud of. And join us on social media. Learn more at truckingmovesamerica.com. Welcome back to Women Road Warriors with Shelly Johnson and Kathy Takaro. We're talking with owner-operator Angelique Temple, a.k.a. Lady Tornado. She runs Tornado Transport. She's working on forming a nonprofit called Tornado's Touch. It's going to do marvelous things. This lady is totally amazing. Angelique, you've got some great wisdom. What other thoughts do you have that you could share with some of our women listeners, no matter what their profession, especially when they get into the I can'ts? Sometimes people have self-doubt. I think women tend to overthink it and they doubt themselves. They may not admit it to other okay. people. And especially right. when they're in a male-dominated profession, they feel right. like they're being judged all the time. How do they get around that? That's something that they have to do mentally. They have to okay. say to themselves, hey, this is me and I can do this. That's a self inner thought that has to be yeah. in your mind altogether because People will think that other people will look down on them. And sometimes they don't be looking down on them. They just feel that way because of the type of people they've been around, because of their life. And if it means that you have to just acquire more skills and what you're doing to build that confidence, do so. And if it means you have to go and, and find someone to mentor, absolutely. They can they can reach out. I mean, Kathy has my email. You guys can do my email, ladytornado at iCloud.com. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, I'm open for mentoring and it doesn't have to be trust. It could be somebody that just needs to have someone to talk to. It could be just someone dealing as, as a mother. It could be just someone thinking, well, I don't know what I want to do, and I just don't want to waste precious time. It could just be someone who needs to vent. I mean, yeah. and this is what I do. This is why we're out here. This is why we mentor. We don't mentor just so people can say, oh, well, they're a part of, yeah, no, nobody cares about all that. They care about what you can do for them at the time that you can do it. And what it takes is a human being it doesn't take a phone call to a 1-800 number where you get a number and they say if this is an emergency please dial 911 sometimes it doesn't take that sometimes it takes for a person that knows what you're going through to actually talk to you so when people have problems when they have one or two kids and they say well you they need to talk to Angelique because you're not going to come to me and tell me that you have a bigger problem with two that I have and I have raised six <laughs> there's nothing yeah. that we're not going to be able to solve on that sure. phone call right then and there right absolutely sometimes absolutely. It, just, it helps to just talk to somebody who's been there done that yes A voice of yeah. wisdom and somebody just saying yeah. look it's gonna be okay you know right and someone who understands and once people yep. know that you understand because it's so easy for them to feel misunderstood when yep. their their problems are different than the person that's giving them the advice because the person might not ever have kids or the person might have a degree to where they're doing what they need to do and saying what they need to say based off their degree but i'm speaking to you from my heart and from my experiences and i'm i'm speaking to you as a person i'm speaking to you as a person let you know you know don't give up You've had so many experiences. It's just tremendous. Yes. <laughs> and I love your tenacity. It is. If Thank there you. Were more people like you, the world would be a whole lot better place. I'm convinced. Well, yes. Two of us anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, absolutely. Yes. We're overcrowding the world with two because we might be overcrowding <laughs> the world with two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, you know, I was feeling like, kind of down a little bit today I just you know I got a lot on my mind and then you just gave me the spark I needed again to get back up get moving yep. woman <laughs> yep thank you oh, good thank I'm you. glad I'm glad you. Yeah, I could do the help <laughs> uh, listening to you I feel like I'm lazy it's like wow oh you my god <laughs> I had a gentleman say that to me that's why I laughed because the other day he asked me what did I do and I was telling him he was like huh I, for some reason, I feel like I should be doing more. And I was like, well, go with that feeling. Go with that feeling. Let me get it oh done. It's so funny. I get that all the time when I tell yes. people, like, I'm this and this and this, and I got this on the go. I'm, I'm creating an online course or whatever. They're like, holy cow, I feel like I'm not doing anything in life. I'm like, well, I'll get moving. Right. That's yes. Right. Yes. Yep. Let's get it done. Just yep. do it. Get her done. Yep. 
<laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, we're so alike. It's so funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> Your kindred spirits, no doubt. Yeah. I'm telling you. Yeah. Uh, Angie, it's been such a delight. You're just, you're such a, a joy, a spark, a diamond, a yes. everything. And I am so grateful that you came to take a picture with me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, my God, I know I'll be going back there. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not working that week of uh, women in trucking in November 5th to the 7th. I think I'm not yes. sure yet if I'm or not, but I will be there regardless. So okay. I will see that in person, and then we can talk some more about. Uh, uh, I want to be part of that tornado touch because what we do is so aligned. We're like, why don't we just do it together? You know, I want to be part Absolutely. of that. Yeah. yeah, we definitely Absolutely. need to have that conversation. So, Angelique, where can people reach out to you? I know you've got a lot of things you're doing in your nonprofit, but I'm sure there are people out there who would like to help out. Where do they reach out to you? Well, as of now, until I get uh, everything on the website, which um, is already locked in as tornadostouch.org, they can reach out to me directly at capital A dot temple at tornadostouch.org. That's how they can reach me. Now, your goal is to where uh, you want this to be worldwide, but where is it going to be uh, focused right now? Well, right now, I don't really have a focus. I do Richmond, Virginia, but okay. I do help online. Like, I will help send things to parents that are in need because my daughter living in D.C., the things that I do, that's not really local. I'm in Virginia, so I can't get there all the time. So if it's something that they need, I can order and have shipped to them directly that they need. I, I do that as well. But okay. basically, when I say that I want to be worldwide because I'm getting the registry um, together now. I want to do the registry so that people can just go in there and say, hey, she has Amazon or she has Walmart or she has this. So they can just pick. So like a baby shower type wedding type thing so they could know what's needed still and just pick it because sometimes it's very difficult for like you guys are talking to me, but people who don't know me and people who don't hear this might not know or say, oh, I don't know because I don't know what she's really doing. But sometimes people want to give or help in different ways. Right. So I'm trying to make sure that everything is going to be, but I literally just finished getting everything up and running for that because I've been doing it on my own without the name. So mm -hmm. basically when I say worldwide, I'm talking about different cities. I don't have a focus. Um, when okay. I go to a place that I hear people talking, like I went to Maryland the other day and the young lady said, yes, yeah, bad neighborhood around here. And the kids, the, the daughter came out and she couldn't find her parents. And I was like, and okay, so I, I look for that. I look for that so I can kind of get with the whoever's in charge of whatever precinct and say, hey, can, can we do this community service in your area? You know, I'm not asking you for anything just to give me a small space with some cones. Can can we do that? Can I have this this parking lot for like three hours? You know, mm -hmm. can I do it? And my husband cooks, so he'll be with me and we'll be always doing hot dogs and, and whatever the children can eat and pizza and stuff like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's, it's going to be like a whole big deal event and, and I just want people to know that you care I want the kids to know that that somebody out there cares because yeah. it's necessary it's so needed what is the organization again uh, just in case people weren't totally listening and how does it reach out <laughs> <laughs> it is a tornadoes touch LLC the website has not been up and running but it is locked in as tornadoes touch.org and they can reach me directly at capital a dot temple at tornadoes touch.org oh i love it angelique this has been a pleasure you certainly do have you are lady tornado i love it i love it and you <laughs> thank you so many people thank you for being on the show this has been great you've been listening to women road warriors with shelly johnson and kathy takaro if you want to be a guest on the show or have a topic or feedback, email us at info at tncradio.live. Thank you for listening to another great interview on tncradio.live. And don't forget, be sure to subscribe to our podcast of Women Road Warriors. It's free. All of the material you hear on tncradio.live on our website, our broadcasts, or our podcasts are copyrighted. There can be no distribution without the express consent of tncradio.live and its partners. For inquiries, write us 
at info at tncradio.live.